So what exactly is logistic regression? Logistic regression is a common supervised machine learning algorithm. Supervised meaning that we have a set of data, we map that data to labels, so for example, A or B. And these, the existence of these labels is what makes an algorithm supervised. If these labels didn't exist, then it would be unsupervised, just trying to find patterns within the data. It's also a classification algorithm, which means that it simply takes data and puts it into groups. Let's take a look at a simple example of where we would apply logistic regression. So here we have some more weather data and we have um, an input and an output. And in this case, the output takes two values, either yes or no. And these are essentially the labels which we want to map our data into. And so the objective is to predict whether it will rain tomorrow in Albury. And the two groups here would be, we have yes, which in binary would be one and no, which is zero. Because we only have two outcomes, this is known as binary logistic regression. So just to give some maths on how we can map these inputs onto our output, the first we use a sense of linear regression where we produce a value from all of our input data. We then take this value and put it into what's called the logistic function. The addition of this little function is what changes linear regression into logistic regression really. And this essentially just takes any value and puts it on a scale between zero and one, essentially transforming any value into a sort of probability. And then we, imp and then we implement what's called a boundary condition where we check is this value produced by our logistic function greater than or equal to 0 0.5. And if that's the case, we'll output yes, it will rain tomorrow. And if not, we'll output no, it will not rain tomorrow. So don't worry if you found the previous slide a bit confusing. I'll try to give you guys a more visual representation. So here we have all of our input data. If you guys look back on the previous slide, it's basically just the column titles. So we have the min temperature, max temperature, rainfall, and rain today. This bias essentially enables us to include this, what's called the intercept or theta zero, which we discussed briefly in linear regression. And we're essentially using all of these input data to come up with a value of z. So essentially what we're doing is, is we're producing a value of z by doing z equals theta zero times one, which is our bias value, plus theta one times x one, plus theta two times x two, and plus three to three times x three, all the way up to plus theta eight times x eight. And once we've reduced this value, we then input it into the logistic function, which essentially converts this value into a range of zero and one. We will discuss the logistic function soon, and then we implement our boundary condition. We say, is this value greater than or equal to 0 0.5? If so, predicts yes, it will rain tomorrow. And if not, no. So the logistic function is essentially what separates logistic regression from linear regression, the addition of this extra step. And it takes the form of, of sigma z equals one over one plus e to the minus c, where z is the value produced from our linear regression function. And this is essentially what the function looks like when it's plot. So notice that sigma z takes a value between zero and one. So basically converting any value into a sort of probability and equals 0 0.5 when z is equal to zero. And we can essentially use this as a boundary and say that any value produced by theta z that is bigger than 0 0.5, so any of these values, we can output a certain condition, we can output a certain label. And if it's less, then we can output another label. So just as linear regression had a cost function, so does logistic regression. And we use this cost function to calculate our parameters of our model. So notice that in step one and step two of producing our algorithm, we had this, we were producing this value of z from our input data, and then we inputted this z value into the logistic function. But both of these can essentially just be combined by simply putting the z over here into our logistic function to give us an overall function, and we'll call this h theta of x. Now we have a function that represents our model. We can now go on to calculate a cost function. So remember with linear regression, we had the following cost function, but we're essentially just trying to find the distance between our predicted values and our actual values all squared, then dividing it by two times the number of examples. And so the same concept applies to logistic regression. We want to see how far away our predicted values are from our actual values, and our predicted values are denoted by h theta of x. So this was just the step before we implemented that boundary condition of saying, you know, if it's bigger than 0 0.5, we'll output yes and less than 0 0.5, no. So in this case, we're looking at our predicted values, not as yes or no, but rather of the value produced by our model before we implement the boundary condition. So the cost function of logistic regression is separated into two groups. One, if y equals one, that is if our actual observation is it did rain tomorrow, 
and our model predicted some value of h theta x, which would take a, a value between 0 and 1. We want to see how close our predicted value is to y in this case, which is 1. And for that, we just simply do minus log of our predicted value. And remember, our predicted value h theta of x takes a range between 0 and 1. So if h theta of x was close to 1, let's say 0 0.9, we should expect a small cost. And if it was, you know, quite far away from 1, we should expect quite a high cost. And so the second case is if y equals 0, that is, no, it will not rain tomorrow, then we are given the following cost function. So I'll now try to explain why both of these cost functions work. So with our first cost function, when y equals 1, we said that our cost function is denoted by minus log of our predicted values h theta of x. And the reason why this works is, like I mentioned, if we, want, if we get a value close to 1, if our model predicts a value close to our actual value, which is 1, then we should have a low cost. So if we plot our graph of our predicted values h theta of x against our cost function minus log h theta of x, let's see how it works out. So as I mentioned, if our model predicts a value close to 1, which is our actual output, then there should be a low cost. And if it outputs a value, you know, far away from 1, then there should be a high cost. So we can see here on the graph that exactly matches. And if our model predicts a value of 1, and so we have no cost, and if our model predicts a value far away from 1, so let's say here, which is roughly around 0 0.1, then our model would have a very high cost, as you can see here. And the same exact logic applies for if y equals 0. But now we flipped it by doing minus log of 1 minus h theta of x. So again, if our model predicts a value close to 0, in this case, let's say exactly 0, then we have no cost. And if our model predicts a value far away from 0, let's say, I don't know, around 0 0.9, then we have quite a high cost. So we can now do a sneaky maths trick to try to combine both of these cost functions. And I'll try to explain that in a minute. So notice before we had the following cost functions, if y equals one, we have this. And if y equals zero, we have a different cost function. But we can actually combine both of these into the single cost function given by this. So let's see why this works. If y equals one, we simply just substitute one into our big combined cost function, and we get minus log of h theta of x minus 1 minus 1, which is 0, of log 1 minus h theta of x. So this essentially becomes 0, since 1 minus 1 is 0. So that cancels out. And we're left with simply just minus log of h theta of x, which was the same as we had before. And also, if y equals 0, exact same thing, let's substitute y into our big cost function, and we get minus 0 of log h theta of x. In this case, this cancels out. And we're left with minus 1 times log of 1 minus h theta of x, which again is the same as we had before. So now we have this big combined cost function. And now all we need to do is apply this cost function to all of our observations. And then we'll divide it by the total number of observations to give us a nice average. And this produces the final cost function denoted by j of theta which is given by the following formula. We can then apply gradient descent, which we spent a whole episode explaining this algorithm to calculate the parameters theta zero, theta one, theta two, theta three, and theta eight of our model. And once we have all of our parameters calculated, we have successfully built our logistic regression model. So how do we evaluate logistic regression? To take a look at the following table of 100 observations. So in this case, if our actual output was no, and our, and our model predicted no, this is true, and it's negative, since we're looking at our models predict no or zero. So this is what's called a true negative. And in this case, we've observed that our model has produced 39 true negatives. And the same thing applies if our actual output was yes and our model got it right and predicted yes, this is true. And it's also positive since we're looking at the predicted values, which are yes or one. And in this case, our model produced 50 true positives. And the opposite of these two are simply false negatives and false positives. So we would expect that our model, you know, gets it right most of the time. So we expect a higher value of trues than falses, which in this case is true. We only have, you know, seven and four falses and 39 and 50 trues. And we can essentially just use these values to come up with an evaluation metric. So if we just simply add the true negatives and true positives and divide it by the total number of observations, we get a evaluation metric of 0 0.89, and this is what's known as the accuracy of our model. And we can use this evaluation metric each time we build a model to see what further changes we can do to try to increase our accuracy.
So in the next episode, I hope to implement logistic regression on our weather data set, which you guys saw earlier. So I hope to see you guys there. Thank you for watching.